Did you know that while much of the world's attention focuses on Israel, Hezbollah, and the Middle East, 16 million Christians are displaced, suffering from persecution in sub-Saharan Africa? Many of the displaced are in Nigeria and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Well, joining us to explain what is happening and to tell us about his organization's Arise Africa initiative and No Road Home report is Ryan Brown. He's CEO of Open Doors USA. Hi, Ryan. So this Open Doors No Road Home report is quite troubling. Half of the displaced people in sub-Saharan Africa are Christian. So what's happening to them and why? Yeah, this, this is a, the result of a multi-year trend in which we just continue to see violence and instability escalate throughout sub-Saharan Africa. And Nigeria really is the epicenter of much of that, that violence uh, against Christians. Um, and so what we see is uh, mass displacement of Christians in the area. Um, the, the need far outpaces uh, the support that's been pledged by uh, the UN and other actors uh, to um, you know, provide aid. And so the, the humanitarian crisis just continues to mount throughout the area. Well, let, let's get into more specifics here on Nigeria. Many people would say, no, this is not religious persecution, but tribal disputes over land that is driving the violence. And you've been there. You've helped victims. What did you and your team discover there? Yeah, our, our team, uh, you know, through those on the, the ground resources, it's it's true that, that these things are never in isolation. Uh, you know, persecution of Christians never exists in a vacuum. And there are multiple factors. It is multifaceted. And so that displacement includes Christians and non-Christians. However, Christians are uniquely uh, affected by the realities of what's going on right now. Um, in many cases, you know, Christians are not receiving the same type of protections that perhaps their, their Muslim um, fellow countrymen are. Uh, and so they become uh, more ready targets of those that are, are seeking to create instability there within the state. Uh, in those areas where we do see uh, folks, you know, the internally displaced camps, uh, Christians can often be overlooked in the distribution of aid and support. And so Christians can suffer even greater than, than those that are already suffering in the area. So is Boko Haram still a major factor in the persecution or is it coming mostly from wealthy land owners using uh, the Fulani herdsmen to drive Christians from their villages? Yeah, great question. And I would say that that answer is different in different parts of the country. So if you take a look in the Borno state, um, yes, the, the you know, Boko Haram is, is still active as well as um, you know, ISWAP and, and, and other uh, Islamic militants. Uh, when you take a look in other parts of the country, like the Plateau State, you see much more of that, that Fulani, uh, Fulani militants um, driving the persecution. And nearby, the Democratic Republic of Congo, we've reported on the Allied Democratic Forces, the ADF, which, by the way, is not democratic at all. They're a mixture of Islamic terrorists allied with ISIS and the remnants of Joseph Kony's Lord's Resistance Army from neighboring Sudan and Uganda. So tell us more. What's the latest? What's happening there? Yeah, we, uh, you know, not long ago, um, you know, there was the reports of uh, a number of, of Christians that were, were brutally killed uh, and attacked uh, in, in the DRC. And so that stability, instability rather, uh, continues to, to be prevalent. Uh, and again, we are seeing this, this is a multi-year trend. The, these aren't necessarily isolated incidents. Um, this has been for the better part of a decade, we've seen these trends continuing to escalate. And you know, our brothers and sisters uh, throughout Sub-Saharan Africa, not long ago, they, they came together and, 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 and they asked, uh, they asked the global church, they asked uh, international actors to be aware of their situation. Uh, they asked their brothers and sisters to lift them up in prayer, uh, to let them know that they're not forgotten in this. They asked uh, international actors uh, to take action. They asked the Nigerian government uh, specifically to um, not allow these actors to to carry forward with impunity, uh, but to, to uh, bring people to justice. And where else in sub-Saharan Africa are Christians being persecuted? What other country or countries concern you the most there, Ryan? Yeah, you mentioned the DRC. Uh, that, that continues to uh, be a, a place of concern. Somalia, uh, certainly, as well. So it's, it's really throughout the, the region. Um, you know, the 
I do I continue to, to point out that Nigeria, in many ways, really seems to be an epicenter of, of what's going on and uh, reflective of, of, uh, of a trend that is continuing with a, to, to grow at an alarming rate throughout the region. And finally, tell us about uh, how the Open Doors Arise Africa initiative is making a difference. Um, in October, we'll be launching a petition uh, in which we are asking uh, Christians to sign on to say that they will commit to pray for brothers and sisters and that they are willing to lock arms in solidarity with our brothers and sisters uh, that are suffering greatly in, throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. Our goal is to, to see a million people uh, across the globe sign this petition in solidarity. Uh, this you know, communicates to uh, the world um, with you know, a, a great voice. Uh, it lets you know the, these government actors, um, uh, like the Nigerian government and others, know that the world is watching. And I would say, even most importantly, it communicates to our brothers and sisters uh, in Africa that they're not forgotten. That we stand with them and that we're lifting them up in prayer. And that's so important. Prayer is the key, isn't it? Ryan Brown. It is. It's the first response. CEO of Open Doors U.S. Although the subject matter is difficult, we always appreciate you sharing your time and insights with us. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you.